Well, welcome to uh, Focus Today and uh, delighted to have in the studio our good buddy, Mr. Patrick Doyle's with us. He heads up Veritas Counseling. And well, today's going to be an interesting day because we're going to deal with the subject. Quite frankly, I am thankful that you're dealing with <laughs> thankfulness. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time because, uh, by the way, uh, before we get into the heaviness of this, you're more than welcome to be a part of the conversation. If you want to join us, the phone number is 776 776- Five three six eight, and if you're listening and watching outside the immediate area, toll free. We'd love to hear from you. Toll free one eight hundred three seven three five three six eight. Give us a buzz and be a part of the conversation. We want to deal with thankfulness today. Yes. Why this? What what made you bring this up? Well, I'll give you my my uh, end my end game, and then we'll maybe work backwards from there. All right. One of my beliefs is that thankfulness is re- is relational medicine. Hmm. And often what I deal with in my office is people having relational difficulties. And what I find is a stark um, lack of thankfulness from people within the faith um, Mm -hmm. where, you know, God has promised to care for us. He's moved into our lives. He's given us hope and courage. And again, I don't mean the kind of thankfulness that is um, the the denial kind of thankfulness. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's acting happy when their circumstances don't. I'm not talking about that kind of false thankfulness. I'm talking about a real thankfulness that comes from a spiritual place, not from a circumstantial place. Mm. You know, some people would say, well, you're talking about contentment or joy. Yes, but there's an a- element of thankfulness which is um, about me accurately assessing my circumstances spiritually right. rather than letting my circumstances assess me. Okay. Now, this sets up a big, big, big topic that yeah. um, I want to talk about. Okay, and that is uh, cynicism within Christianity. Yeah, uh, it appears it appears that we Christians are have become extremely cynical, mm. and I'm trying to figure out why. Mm-hmm. When you get around a happy Christian, you want to be you want to be around that person. Yeah. In fact, you actually begin to question: Is their happiness real? <laughs> yeah. I mean, can you really? Are you you got both feet on the ground? I mean, <laughs> right. You know, what's are you dealing with reality? Are you right? dealing with reality here? <laughs> Uh, but there are some people who are genuinely joyful yeah. because they're born again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they got problems, yeah. they got issues, but yeah. they got the right attitude about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But I am really surprised of how judgmental and cynical mm-hmm. the church has become in America. Yeah. Yeah. And you deal with it every day. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it is. All right, That's I want to read to you something here. The word for you today. <laughs> <laughs> this powerful little <laughs> devotional yeah. Good. that Bob uh, brings out. And this is taken from Luke chapter 9, verse 55, all right? Okay. He said, one day, one day Jesus went to uh, a Samaritan village and was not well received. I'll imagine that. <laughs> and so the disciples said, now here's the disciples yeah, taking try, charge Trying to here. be helpful. Yeah, we're trying to be helpful. <laughs> Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? <laughs> all right? Love and peace. So when, when, when you're not, you're around people that don't agree with you. Yeah. Just you, want, you want to call down some yeah. fire, right? Yeah. Smoke them right there, okay? <laughs> but Jesus turned and rebuked them. And he said, do, or you do not know what manner of spirit you are. Uh-huh. Now, wait a minute. Uh-huh. Is that the cynical spirit? Mm-hmm. And he goes on to say, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Boy, what an attitude adjuster. Yeah. And when people don't, you know, I think Christians by nature are judgmental right. because people don't believe like us, don't right. think like mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. They don't, uh, they think that we have the truth, you don't. I mean, right. I'm talking among ourselves yeah. and different mm-hmm. denominations. Yeah. We want to smoke one another and right. the world's sitting back going, uh, I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, and it doesn't reflect the example that Jesus gave us. Yeah. I mean, how many times do people disagree with him? A lot. Right. And what did he do? He loved them. Yeah. And even, even to the point where, you know, he was accused falsely all the time. Jews, all the, 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 the religious leaders always trying to trap him. Mm-hmm. He didn't get mad. He just said, I know what's in your heart. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you do that to me. Right. But it wasn't, rah, you know, intensity. So, so what would cause us to want to bring down fire on someone who doesn't do what we want them to. Well, you want to be in control, not letting God have control. Yeah, and it's also based in in um, vengeance. 
Vengeance. Yes. Well, that belongs to God, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, supposed well, to. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to help him for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'll take care of this, Lord. Just <laughs> give me five. I've often, I've often, I've often uh, told him that a you know, one well-trained sniper could handle a lot of problems. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, the, but the idea that if something doesn't go my way, then it's a disaster. Then it can't be right. Mm -hmm. Which is really, if we get down to it, idolatry. It's me saying that my way, my will, my desires, my life, the way I want, what I, 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 is more important than how God has laid things out. Wow. And so will that steal your thankfulness? Because how often have you been able to control God? Well. <laughs> you know, how know. often have you been? I mean, if I was writing the story of my life, mm -hmm. I would not have written it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, even the things that I've done, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, if I could rewrite it, I would. Yeah. But so the idea of control gets us in trouble. Mm. So do you believe that God is good? And if you do, then that will lead you to some thankfulness because even though there's difficulty in your life, even though things aren't going the way you want, He's made a promise to you that He will take care of it in the best way possible, even if it's difficult. All right. In, but if in, it doesn't happen my way, I become cynical. All right. Well, I am... I am genuinely amazed of how cynical Christians have become across mm -hmm. the board, mm -hmm. uh, even among ourselves. And so, uh, is that, are you saying then we're trying to control, as Christians, we're trying to control everybody to be like we are? We're, we're, it, sometimes, and I think, I think ultimately what we want is we're trying to control our lives to be what we want them to be. Now what I understand is that I see through a glass dimly, mm -hmm. or as one of my friends corrected me and said, no, you see through a a two by six. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it all. Yeah, the, that might be a little more accurate than yeah. that. I think God was being nice when he said a glass dimly. But mm -hmm. my point is, is that I'm not sovereign. Mm -hmm. I'm not omnipotent. How do I know what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen in five minutes, mm -hmm. but God does. Mm -hmm. So if I believe him to be good, then I can trust him. Now we'll speak it out and say, oh, God is good. But then if you look at our lives and they're full of you know, cynicism and reproach and vengeance, that doesn't add up with us believing or knowing in our soul that God is good. You know, and so as we spend time talking to each other as, as brothers and sisters, one of the things that I really think miss, we're missing is rehearsing the truth of who He is. Instead, we're complaining about what isn't. All right, so, and then thankfulness goes. Yes. Uh, if thankfulness goes, then worship goes. Yeah. And praise right. goes. Right. In and fact, that's the door opener to heaven. Yeah, and exactly. And so, in fact, what Paul does many times in his writings is he equates thankfulness with faith. Hmm. So, thankfulness is a byproduct of faith. It's not something you muster up. It's something that is the result of you understanding the circumstances that God has revealed or given. You know, and I've had a lot of very difficult circumstances in my life. I will have them again. And so you, you see Paul in a prison cell, and he's thankful. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know what? If they kill me, great. I get to be with God today. Mm -hmm. if, they don't, if they don't kill me, great. I get to serve him. I can't lose. You yeah, know? That, that, that's a, that, that is a settlement in your heart yes. and in your soul of who you are with God. Right, and he's trusting God for the outcome while he's in prison unjustly for doing what God asked. Mm -hmm. Not complaining that, well, this isn't fair, God. Mm -hmm. Why don't you help me? Mm -hmm. God's like, I am helping you. I'm doing exactly what I need to do, and I've chosen you to do it, Paul. And that we all know that God intervened in Paul's life and took him on another path. Paul's gratitude was the result of how he saw God not what his circumstances were. Well, and he's the one that said, in light, these afflictions are light and momentary. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. That guy was, you know, stoned, beaten. I mean, he was flogged. I mean, he had 39 lashes right. five times. Most people didn't survive it once. Right. Can you imagine what his back looked like? No, I can't. One or, big scar tissue. But you, you know, and he's like, these are light and momentary. I'm yeah. like, what are you taking, Paul? That's crazy. But he said, he goes on to say, in light of the glory of who God is. Mm -hmm. Oh, so if you don't see your circumstances through that, they will be not light and momentary. They will be overwhelming, difficult, and, and devastating. How dangerous is it? Um, Patrick, from your point of view as a counselor, yeah. to 
Sikh Christians who choose to be cynical and ungrateful, mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, yeah, I'm thankful God saved me. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> how dangerous is this? Because it seems to me that uh, you're narrowing your capacity to be used by God. Yeah. You're just a bitter soul, and yep. he may just set you over there and let you cook for a while because well, he really can't use you. Even even if he, I mean, I think he still could, but even if he, whether he does or doesn't, you're going to be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and so let's put it into a relational context. I mean, let's take a husband and a wife, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, does, does a spouse that you're involved with on a daily basis or a child do things that irritate you? Do they do things that disappoint you? Do they do things that hurt you? And what are you going to do with that? Are you going to be able to have any level of thankfulness about who they are, about what God's doing? Are you going to be disappointed, bitter, waiting on them to get it together, tired of it, overwhelmed, bothered? And if you approach a relationship from that stance on a regular basis, I can tell you that the relationship is not going to go well long term. Now, it's not that we all don't find ourselves in that place, but are we going to stay? And so as we go into the next segment, I'll talk about how does thankfulness get into that reality and help us move out of it? There you go. Uh, Patrick Doyle's with us, and we're talking about uh, <laughs> thankfulness. Are you thankful? And you say, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> you need to take a second look at this, and uh, maybe you'd like to join the conversation. You're welcome to do that. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paulina, and I work at the Deaf TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact not only in our community, but around the world. It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. All right, we're back with Patrick Doyle, and our subject today is thankfulness, and uh, it really is a, a huge topic based upon, um, uh, I think, which is almost a virus, if not a disease, among Christianity, and that's cynicism. Yeah. I mean, we're so cynical about everything, you know, and uh, it's dividing us, and yeah. uh, you see it among denominations. Um, you know, I, I, I get it all the time. I'll say something on the air, and, and somebody will say, well, you didn't say it right. You should have said it this way, and, yeah. and you kind of go, whoa. Right. Uh, uh, but... Uh, can we understand the, the basic fundamentals? We are saved by grace. Yeah. The whole world revolves around the fact that God created it so that we could inhabit it, so that we could have a relationship with Him and spend eternity with Him. Yeah. When you get the big picture, right. the small things kind of fall into perspective. Right. You know? well, well, and it, the, one of the things about thankfulness that I think is important to recognize is that, so I've had a lot of trauma in my life. Mm -hmm. People doing me harm. My father did me harm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done harm to people. Mm -hmm. so, do, so why should I be thankful? You passed it. <laughs> God saved you. God, God moved in and yeah. started to redeem it. Now, yeah. somebody might be listening thinking, well, God hasn't moved in on me. Mm -hmm. my, my situation is still very miserable. Right. Just, I'm not out of it yet. Right. I don't know. What about and how come? Yeah. So, I mean, those are real things. People are living in real trauma, even as we speak. So, what I would say is, is as believers, if they see the thankfulness and the hope in me, it might encourage them that they won't stay stuck. And when you're in a difficult circumstance, it's really hard mm -hmm. not to see that as your life. It's so oppressive, it's so overwhelming, it's so intense that you think this is just never gonna end, it, it can't be done, it can't be, it can't be changed. And so as, as we talk with each other, I think we come from a place of thankfulness about what God has done, mm -hmm. that will change how we see tomorrow as opposed to, yeah, I know, and it never, and they always, and because, and you can't, and you know how it is, and never gonna because, and <laughs> yeah. that will continue to breed the cynicism, the negativity, the, um, you know, the loathing of life. Yeah. Uh, and so this is not what faith will, should produce. And when I say faith, I want to be clear to say, I'm not talking about the, <clears throat> I should get what I want faith. I'm talking about the faith in who God is and his character. Mm -hmm. 
faith in the fact that he's good, that he's loving, that he's kind, that he's generous, that he's merciful. And you're like, well, if that God's all that, then why is my circumstances this way? Right, right. And I can tell you, I've had that argument with God on multiple occasions. Right. And what he's done is revealed to me that he was there, that he is good, and that he's working towards something that I can't see the end of. Okay. And he continues to give me grace, to give me mercy, to love me in a way that no one else can, which satisfies my soul. And, and see, and, and I'm telling you, much of the satisfaction of my soul has come from him redeeming the evil that's happened to me. All right, let me ask you this. A um, lot of our disappointments, supposed disappointment with God is that we have an expectation. Yeah, we and, all do. And uh, we're expecting it to be done this way. Yep, our way, yeah. Now, um, is part of this healing process um, surrendering those expectations to God? Absolutely, Perry. That's such a big thing. <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the things that I learned in in AA years ago was um, acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I cannot accept some person, place, thing, or s some fact of my life as being the way it's supposed to be right now. Mm -hmm. And nothing in this world happens by mistake in God's world. So. Acceptance is the answer to my problems today. Mm. So what would happen if I lived with, now if in the faith, we live under the idea that God is with us, he's moving, he's, he's redemptive, he's not gonna let anything go unredeemed, even if it's painful. So I can accept what's happening, deal with it, and continue to move. But when I don't accept things, what do I do? I grind and I fight and I wrestle and I'm disappointed and I'm mad and I'm hurt, yeah. right? And you know, how many circumstances have you had, if I have, where I, I believe that this is the right outcome and it just is not going there. Yeah. And it's just not going there and it's just yeah. not going there. And I'm like, hey, come on, God, you, I believe this is right and you kind of said it was. And yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. And he's got his own timing. He's got his own way. And he's got to deal with the evil and the sin of the world around us. All right. Now, at what point, and, and, and I know some of this would call, some people call this the power of positive confession. Yes. Power of positive thinking. And I think all those have their places. But at what point do you really have an attitude change? Do you say, all right, God, I can't change it. You can. And mm -hmm. I'm going to praise you for the outcome, knowing that you're going to do right. something. I just don't know what. Right. I mean, is that out of the box no i think what you're getting at is surrender yeah and i think surrender is a necessary part of thankfulness because what i got what i said earlier is that look <clears throat> the one of the cores one of the core problems here is is idolatry mm. my way is best no it's not you don't know just like this just like the scripture you read where jesus rebukes the disciples they don't know mm -hmm. they think they do they think it's a great idea to call down fire on and kill people <laughs> and mm -hmm. God says, uh-uh, that's not how I'm going to do it. Well, but we thought it was a good idea. So can you surrender your will, your ideas, your agenda to God? Now, I would say this. I'm not going to surrender my will to somebody I don't trust. And can't see. And can't see. <laughs> yeah. So what happens, it brings into focus really quick, what do I trust? Mm -hmm. Me, like, I myself. Do I trust my bank account? Do I trust my wisdom? Yeah. Do I trust my power? Do I trust my job? Do I trust, what do I trust? If it's something other than God, you're gonna be in trouble because you, you don't have any control. Wow. Control is a myth. Yeah. I mean, right? Right. Yeah, I learned that <laughs> We wouldn't way. be sitting here. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, let me just say to our viewers and listeners, you're more than welcome to join us. If you want to remain anonymous, uh, we certainly respect that. That's not giving your name. Mm -hmm. uh, the local phone number is area code 541-776-5368. And if you are outside the immediate Medford area, it's toll free wherever you're listening and watching, uh, watching today. And that's one 800 373-5368. Um, before we go into another break here in a few minutes, where does low self-esteem play into this? Because yeah. a lot of people have low self-esteem mm -hmm. for various reasons, yep. which creates an incredible cynical spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that, that may be self-defense. Mm -hmm. And some people use negativity mm -hmm. as a... Um, as a power play, they'll use it as power. They'll, they'll go to the negative as something, right. which empowers them, because the, then the conversation has to go to respond to the negative, the right. positive. Right. Now, you get all that, and you're the yeah. psychologist. Right. I don't get so, it. So, but. but what people do, when, what you're talking about, Perry, is that people who don't feel valuable, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, 
they have what I call self-protecting relational styles. So they relate to other people mm. in such a way that protects them from any sort of vulnerability. And so, an and you can spiritualize that. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so then you use spiritual stuff, right. but you're still keeping people at bay, which is the opposite of what God talks about in, in the scriptures and in, and in the gospel, which is that this whole thing that God's doing is about intimacy. It's about intimacy first with him, which he prepares and makes the plan for. He didn't ask us. He just mm -hmm. did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And, and as a result of him loving me, and caring for me and me knowing that at a deep level, then I then take that and take it to my brother, take it to my sister. Not because I need to get something, not because I'm, not because I'm, um, you know, whatever. I'm doing it because I'm doing it out of the love he's given me, mm. which is very different than me relating to people to try to get what I need. And we all do it. So, you know, don't anybody think that we don't do that. But what we want to do is minimize that kind of life which leads to something very different than thankfulness. Yeah. And we want to start m maximizing on the fact that, is God good? Is He trustable? Is He trustable? Boy, that's a great question. Um, and yes. I've answered that question both ways many times. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. And I could answer it tomorrow differently yeah. than I do right now. But the beautiful thing is, is His Spirit keeps coming in and bringing conviction to me and reminding me of who He is. And then He puts people in my life that remind me and then He brings circumstances and some painful and some not. So do you think a lack of thankfulness is, um, is an indicator as to why things aren't happening in the life of the Christian? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're not thankful, then what? And does that stifle God from moving in their life? I don't think anything can stop God, I, yeah. I, because I think He's you know powerful. But no, but I'm thinking principally, you know. Well, I think I think what thankfulness, a well, lack of thankfulness, is more of an indication of where you're at, more than a preventer. Okay, mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm if I'm uh, if I have a lack of gratitude, a lack of thankfulness, chances are what I'm going to see is going to be very different than if I was thankful. Because you know what I bumped into, and you probably do too, as a counselor, is that people will be extremely cynical. Yeah. But when they get into worship, it's like, man, they're just totally in love with God and they're worshiping and they're praising mm -hmm. Him. Mm -hmm. But they get done with that and they're cynical again. Mm -hmm. I go, well, wait a minute. I mean, don't we call that bipolar or something? <laughs> what do we call that? Well, what, oh, I call it fake. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm not trying to <clears throat> judge anyone, but, yeah. you know, I know I've done it in my own life. You go to church <clears throat> and you play a role. But you're not really honest. You, you, you do what is done around you. you, you play the, you know, you put on the face, you smile, you say thank you and hi and good and yeah and mm -hmm. praise the Lord and amen and then you go home and you really live, which isn't anything to do with that. And, and that, what do you think that's going to produce in you? Is that going to produce thankfulness? No, because it's all fake. And so that's what I'm talking about is what the conversation that Jesus that you read about, that was fairly real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys don't even know what you're talking about. And that's not why I've come anyway. Yeah. But he, he also called in the question their spirit. <clears throat> exactly. You know. Right, and he was going to make sure God through God through him was going to make sure they got where they needed to go. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't he, he wasn't playing around. He wasn't faking it. And so, but I think in church a lot of times what we do is we have a level of falsity to look good. And if you really know that God loves you and he's and he and that can't be changed, mm -hmm. what do you care what other people think? Um, and it, if you don't care what other people think, you'll probably be a lot more thankful. Yeah, I've learned that. Because I mean, God I, is satisfied with you. I realize I can't change a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> what a revelation. That well, makes two of us. <laughs> let me ask you this question, and you chew on it while we take the break. Okay. Is a lack of thankfulness in somebody's life really a lack of peace in their life? All right, we'll deal Absolutely. with that. Patrick Doyle coming up next here on Focus Today. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at the Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368.
we're back, and the subject today is thankfulness, and uh, it's, a, it's really a, an interesting topic. I, I think we have to ask the question, are you thankful as a person? Yeah. And you say, well, yeah, I am. Da, da, da. But does your life, does your attitude, does your spirit reflect yeah. that? Yeah. And I asked you the question before we went into the break, is a lack of uh, thankfulness a lack of peace in somebody's life? Yeah. I mean, they haven't settled something. Yeah. Is Definitely. That, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely true. And, and you know, where does peace come from? Is it, is it because I solve all my problems? Well, I think it's the old gospel song, and yet uh, <laughs> it's often said, I know in my knower Yeah, uh, that God and I are okay. Yeah. I mean, er everything else could be going to hell in a handbasket right. around me, but yeah. my life with God is we're together. Everything's fine. And, yeah. He's and, promised to take yeah. care of you. Yeah. So the, gear, the, out the outcome is ultimately guaranteed. Yeah. Do we really live that way? Well, no, we don't. No, because we're we, we got all the circumstances yeah, in our face yeah, and all the bills yeah, coming at us yeah. and whatever, and we're like, ah. Yeah. But God's like, son, look, you were destined for destruction. Yeah. And I moved in and saved you. Yeah. And I guarantee to keep you that way. And I'm going to bring you to my heaven. So no matter what befalls you between here and there, where nothing can get between us, not even your sin. Mm -hmm. I'll convict you and we'll bring it out. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So if I know that I'm absolutely secure in that, why would I not be thankful? This is a difficult circumstances, but you know what? I know I'm going to be taken care of. Mm. I'm in pain right now, and hey, brother, can you help me? But ultimately, I know I'm going to be okay. So it keeps it from crushing me. Why can't we believe that, Patrick? Why is it so hard for Christians to, after they become a Christian and they walk the life and they walk in the faith for a while, they seem to have this cloud that comes over that pushes them down. Well, I'm, I, <laughs> this might be difficult to digest, but I think it's because what we've done inadvertently, I don't believe it's any master plan or anybody's evil. I just think it's sort of things have just developed this way. Most of what we hear in church is designed to give us information. And we're supposed to listen and then do. Apply. Apply the truths of Scripture, right? <clears throat> so it's aimed at our head, but that's not where God really lives in me. God lives in my soul. He lives in my spirit, mm -hmm. right? Down here. So what a lot of what our Christian world is geared at is to inform us. But really, what we need is transforming, not informing. And so when we when we have all this sort of um, didactic information coming at us from the pulpit, mm -hmm. it, it, it puts us in a different frame. So if I just get the right information, I've heard this said so many times, Perry, people come into my office and they're like, I know if I could just learn the lesson God has for me, this would go away. Yeah. Um, God's not interested in teaching you anything. Mm. His whole thing is that, look, I wrote the Bible, God would say, as a revelation of who I am. It's not a manual for living. Are there instructions in there? Absolutely. Yeah. But his primary purpose is for it to reveal him. And then we see him. And if you see God, I guarantee you'll be changed. You'll be transformed. One of the uh, criticisms that comes from the, the non-Christian community to the Christian yeah. community is that we are judgmental. Yeah. We are. Mm -hmm. we're, we, now, I don't care what denomination you are part of, right. if it's Christ-centered, you know, yeah. the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection yeah. Yeah. part and accepting of Jesus. Right. Right. So whatever denomination you're a part of, um, the world sees us saying, I have complete truth. No, I have complete yeah, truth. Yeah, no, yeah. I got it over here. Yeah. No, I got it over there. No. And the world is saying, wait a minute. Right. And you see, know. as a result of the gospel, I don't have truth. I have intimacy. Okay. Yeah. I, have, I have a connection and intimacy with God Almighty as a result of what He's done, mm -hmm. which brings me to a place of profound humility. What should happen to me <clears throat> is I should be tossed in hell. Mm -hmm. That's what I've earned. Mm -hmm. But instead, He loves me in a way I can't even explain to you. So if I'm really, truly loved and I know that I am, that will spawn thankfulness. So, so much of the sort of intensity and the 
And the cynicism, as you said, comes from a, of not understanding that. We, we, we've got it all intellectually understood, but we don't solically live it. It's well, not the, in our heart. The other thing that comes out of cynicism is a critical spirit. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're critical about everything. You yeah. can't find any good in anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> You know, all of a sudden you need a vacation from yourself. Yeah. It's the, but see, part <laughs> yeah. of the thing is what, what's underlying that is the goal is it, the goal that's intimated, not outright spoken. The goal is to be right. But that's not the goal. No, okay. Wait, I want to stop there for a minute. Why is there this feeling we got to be right, that my opinion has to be the final answer? Well, here's, here's what my belief is, and this is purely my, my you know, observation. Because what we've done inadvertently is we we've turned the gospel into something that you're responsible for mm. so it's i have to accept god i have to go to church i have to read the bible and when i see the bible saying is god saying i'm going to save you mm. i in fact i did save you it's me i do it you respond to me i don't save you and then you go out and save the world or it's on you so what we've, we've shifted the responsibility from god who is the creator of the universe, who, whose responsibility it actually is, mm -hmm. from him to us. Now, how are we going to handle that responsibility, Perry? We, I don't have the power to do no, that. No. And so what happens is, I believe that if, I've heard it so many times, like, it's my job to save that person. Well, but No, it's not. But Jesus did commission them to go out. Yes. But what was that commissioning them? To disciple, to show them who he is, which is a very different goal than getting them saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have the power to save anybody, Perry. Mm -hmm. That's God's business. Mm -hmm. I need to testify. Mm -hmm. I need to share who I see Him as being. But you see, that responsibility, when it gets off my shoulders, frees me up to share. Mm -hmm. Instead of, oh, did I say it right? And what about, and how come, and oh, and all that pressure. And so what happens is, we, we're, we're trying to be right instead of loving. And you know, I say this in marriage counseling all the time, Perry. If you want to be right all the time, go ahead. But you'll be alone. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes a know-it-all. Is a sign of unthankfulness an unteachable spirit? Well, it might be, but I, I would say it this way. Um, when you don't have any thankfulness, it's, it's not because you're not teachable. It's because you're hyper-focused on the wrong thing. <laughs> mm. And you know, hey, when I'm in pain, it sometimes has a tendency to focus me on the wrong thing, right, right. which is why I need the Holy Spirit to intervene, which is why I need my brothers and my sisters to come alongside me. I mean, the Scripture's encouragement to us is to bear one another's burdens. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean correct them? Does that mean tell them the truth? No. It means being in their lives and sharing the burden. Mm -hmm. Coming alongside someone and letting them lean on me, or me pulling their plow, or cleaning out their garage, right. or whatever. Yeah. It's a sacrificial reality it, ins it, instead it, of me being right. Isn't that in itself also therapeutic? I th Absolutely. I, I think if we can learn to serve others, God, in turn, we're serving ourselves. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, and what it does is it reveals that or the, the goal here is to have closeness, not to be right. Mm -hmm. And in a marriage, if you're thankful for your spouse, will that change how you view them? Sure. And will you be less looking at every little thing they do wrong? Maybe more grateful and maybe that, that gratefulness as you look at what God has blessed you with and how He's... And again, they're not perfect and they're never going to be. Right. And it's not going to always go your way and it's not going to always be, you know, candy and lollipops. <laughs> but if I'm thankful for what God has done in them and what He's given me in them, that changes how I see them. Mm -hmm. I, I quit inspecting them, and I start accepting them. But you do a lot of marriage counseling, I and do. you know that a lack of thankfulness in somebody's life is usually yeah. taken out on the person who's closest to the one That's who's right. struggling with it. Right, and they'll say things to them or behave in ways to them that they wouldn't anyone else. Why? Well, because it, but there's a sense, the false sense of safety. This person won't leave me. They won't reject me. They're committed. They're, they have to stay. Or, oh. or, or, um, you have enough denial in your own heart and mind that thinks that, and to think that it doesn't affect them. I can't tell you how many people I've heard say that in so many words, like, well, you know, it doesn't really bother them. Have you asked them? 
<laughs> well, I have, and I have, and I think you probably have too, Patrick. Experienced marriages, good, loving Christian marriages that yep. dissolve because respect left. Mm-hmm. We didn't, we didn't respect one another, right. and the words heated up. Mm-hmm. The thankfulness went. I mean, you know, you know that it's it just a, a domino effect. Yeah. But one of the things is that we take, we think that other person can take this stuff, mm-hmm. or should. Or should, yeah. Yeah, it's like their job. Yeah. It's a, that's part of your, you know, yeah. job description no. as a spouse. Yeah. No, and 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 so, if you if you have two people who are thankful that they are loved and they know that they're loved and that their love is coming from a place that can't be disturbed, like God, mm-hmm. and they come together and they and then they fellowship around the thankfulness of how God's been with them, what are they going to be able to overcome? Pretty much anything. All right. Well, I, I want to kind of zero in on this because I, I think um, the scripture is pretty clear that we are to be thankful in yeah. all things. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Um, we're to be joyful. We're not. Yep. Uh, John 10 and 10 gives the job description of the devil. Mm-hmm. That's the he comes to steal, destroy, and to kill. Right. That's just, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and right. have it more abundantly. Right. So somewhere between the enemy's <laughs> job description and what Jesus is saying, uh, is the great conflict exactly? You know, right? Uh, but do we do we recognize that? But I I honestly believe this: if the church can get happy again, not a phony happy, but right. a genuine happy that hey, all of this was created for right. us to have a relationship with God. Right. If we can get that reality and get happy again, right. we will be winning people to Christ. Right. But the world is looking at us and going, right. no thanks. Right. You guys are no different than I am. I would call it responsive thankfulness, not happiness. Because okay. happiness, the problem with happiness is that happiness generally depends on what happens, mm-hmm. and I can't control that. <laughs> so it's very fickle. But responsive thankfulness. So I'm, res- I'm thankful in response to the way that God has loved me. Okay. Well, if you ever go out to the butcher shop in Eagle Point, uh-huh. go in and ask for Roger. Okay. Okay. And there is the epitome of a happy guy. <laughs> who loves Jesus. He's had a lot of trials in his life. Roger, if you're listening and watching, I'm making fun of you. But we've had people walk in that store out there. The owner told me they want the happy guy. Yeah. Well, we should be the happy person behind every counter. Exactly. Okay, we'll be right back. Right. Hi, I'm Paula, and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back to kind of wrap up the topic today, and that is thankfulness. And uh, Patrick Doyle's with us with Veritas Counseling. And it's a big topic, as you can say, but I, I think it centers down to the question, are you thankful? And mm-hmm. I, we probably would all respond by saying yes, but is your actions, your life, your spirit yeah, right. reflecting that thankfulness? Yeah, and right. that, that has to be the question because, look, the world is, uh, the non-believing community is starving for authenticity. Yes. They're, well, they're everybody starving. is. They're, they're asking two questions. Who can I trust? Yeah. And, and what is truth? Yeah. And can they see that in us? Are we thankful that there is a God? He loves me. In right. spite of life and all of its challenges, mm-hmm. uh, I'm His and I'm going to heaven. I yeah. mean, is, isn't that enough to be grateful and put a smile on your face? You'd think. You'd think. Yeah. So I like to put it this way. So I've been over to Pelican Bay a few times, um, done some chapel services over there, and nobody there is there for less than 25 years. It's everybody there is 25 years to life, and it's a max security prison. So it's you walk in there, and you just feel the intensity and the oppression and the you know the tension. And uh, so somebody, let's say, gets sentenced to life, and then something happens, some miracle happens, and they get a reprieve, and they're let out of jail. Right. What do you think their attitude will be? Ooh, Yahoo! <laughs> you think they'll be thankful? Yeah. Why? Well, because they had a death sentence. And they're not getting what they deserve. Right. And do you think they're going to be in the car on the way to wherever they're going, going, man, this is a long car ride. Yeah. I can't believe this. i got to ride in the car all this time. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they're going to be focused on that stuff? Nah, they'd be no. jumping and screaming. Yeah, they don't care. With a car ride, I'm in a car. Yeah. Awesome. You know? So you have to understand what you've been freed from. Yeah. You have to understand what, what God has done. 
And so that creates a response in us. And that, that, that response of thankfulness then is the fuel for us to live. Yeah, and I think the other part of that is the, is the attitude is that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah, right. We're not human beings having a spiritual exactly. experience. And when you're born again, that is your life for eternity. Yeah. That's the experience. Right. You're just right. going to go uphill, or, you know, up, I say uphill, uh, you're, uh, gonna, you're gonna just going to go up from there. Right. And, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if you're running a TV station, radio station. Doesn't matter if you're sweeping the floor. Doesn't matter if you're doing counseling, playing football. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you're 50. Doesn't matter if you're five. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if you're 80. Doesn't matter. All those circumstantial things don't change the fact of God's presence in your life. Mm-hmm. And so this is the thing that I want people to understand: is that look, if you really get down to it, spiritually speaking. If God has saved you, and that word is loaded, and I I like to try to avoid it, but if God has moved in and spared you from what you really have earned, Mm -hmm. which is hell, Mm -hmm. that's what you've earned. Mm -hmm. Eternity of being punished. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get it. And what did you do to deserve that that grace? Well, nothing. Right. But you're getting it. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> right? right? And you see this in young, in, in newly minted believers. Mm-hmm. You see that? Woo! Yeah. 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 Because they like, they like got let out of jail. Right. That's every day. Every day, God continues to keep me from suffering the consequences of my own sin. Yeah. And that creates the love relationship with Christ. It yes. creates this thankful spirit. Yeah. And it, provi- and it provides an abundant level of motivation. Is it somewhat uh, egotistical to mm-hmm. be upset with God because um, we're Christians now and the Bible says he's supposed to bless me and he's yes. supposed to take care of me, he's supposed to do all these things and yeah. it's not happening, so yeah. I'm kind of ticked off. Yeah, I would say that's um, not seeing it very clearly. Yeah. Um, uh, and trust me, I've done it many times. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> you know, I, I'm talking about something I don't know about. but. Listen, uh, you know, you getting your way would be a problem. Oh, try it. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to give that a wash. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) You know, because the false reality that we know what's best, Mm -hmm. and that's that's what I said earlier, that is a form of idolatry. Yeah. You are... You you are completely. Do we? Would you go to your? You know, when your grandchildren or your children were like two, mm-hmm. would you just let them have the car? No, of course not. Why? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah obviously. Completely yeah. incompetent. All right. See what what happens is we think after we get saved that we reach some level of competence, mm-hmm. but our dependence, our need for dependence on God, never changes. We're always, in essence, a two-year-old in terms of our dependence. So why has uh, there's been a, a, a move within Christendom to think that, that God wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise? And I want to handle this carefully because it's, it's a touchy right. subject. Right. But it seems to me that it becomes, God becomes a facilitator more than a God. Right, exactly right. And, and so the arrogance implied and me knowing what God needs to do yeah. is part of the problem. I don't know. I am the dependent child of the Almighty, mm-hmm. the all-knowing creator of light. I'm going to tell him what to do. Like, I know I can't even discipline myself to follow him yeah. on a regular basis. You know, it's coming in this morning. I, I got here quite early this morning, do every morning. But I was walking through the parking lot, and I, it was a very clear morning, and uh-huh. the stars were just vivid. And I looked up, and I... I I looked up and saw all the stars, and I thought, wow, he created all those. Yep. And I looked down, and I saw our small little door that said the dove, and I'm going, <laughs> you created that too. <laughs> <laughs> I need an attitude adjustment. Exactly. <laughs> I'm narrowing God to this box. Exactly. Of 2,800 square feet when he created all that out there. Yeah, he's got know. space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll find you some. Yeah. Right? But you see, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So that brings, that brings relief and satisfaction and gratitude into your soul. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. And he's good. So many Christians I talk to, Perry, 
say that they believe God is good, mm -hmm. but in actuality, they're angry and irritated and disappointed because it hasn't gone the way they think it should. I mean, so... Why don't we trust God for healing then? Why don't we trust God? We say we do, but why? I mean, you're, you, you and I have done enough shows on anger. We know right. what that is. That right. go all the way down to uh, a perceived injustice yeah, or yeah. real injustice. Right. Um, we just don't seem to take it to the next level. So here's, here's my, <laughs> we'll do a show on this sometime <laughs> soon, but I think the other problem is, is the church is not functioning in a healthy way as it relates to us being encouraged by each other. Mm -hmm. So you go to church and you sit there and some guy gets up, whoever it is, and he talks and you're all sitting there. Is that fellowship? Mm -hmm. No, that's an audience. We're sitting side by side, all looking that way. We're not facing each other. We're not involved in each other. We don't know each other. And we're getting what? Information. You know, our, our church this last Sunday did something and it ended up being a huge home run. No sermon. They were all testimonies of what God has been doing in people's lives. Excellent. The Ex whole day was just exactly. testimonies. Right. And that's one of the biblical instructions is for us to testify to one another about what He is doing, mm -hmm. not us coming up with some five-point sermon about what we should do. Mm -hmm. And when I see what he's doing, that is insanely encouraging. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look at that. And so, so what it says, instead of me focusing on what I need to do based on some information I'm getting, it starts to focus me on the stars. It starts to focus me on him. <gasps> oh, that's right. You are good. Oh, that's right. And so as we start to encourage each other that way, that keeps us out of the cynicism. We all have a natural bent for it. All of us want to go there. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're sinners. We're, we're broken. We, we, cynicism is natural. So it requires us to live in that intimacy with each other and keep reminding each other of who He is, and which is why I say, bear one another's burdens. Confess your sins to one another. If we're doing that, I believe thankfulness will start to spawn naturally. But when we're just trying to march and be good soldiers and please the Lord and yada, 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 mm. it, 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 it's fraught with difficulty because we're sinners. Yeah, we replace grace with works, and that's very subtly. Very, yeah, and it's very yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Um, you know, but there is a biblical principle, and and I have to tell you, it's a it's a real touchy area, and that is the, the scripture is pretty clear about uh, praising God anyway. Yeah. You know, and I'm paraphrasing it. Yeah. But in spite of the circumstances, praise God anyway. Mm -hmm. In fact, Judah means send praise first. Right. And so you're thinking, well, in spite of the circumstances, I'm supposed to. That's kind of tough. But yeah. there's a principle there. Yeah. The principle is, you 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 believe who God is. Mm -hmm. You're going to worship Him anyway. Right. In spite of the circumstances, and right. create that relationship that can't be broken. Right. Well, and that reminds me of in Psalm 42, as translated by the message. David says, when my soul is in the dumps, now, all of us can relate to that, <laughs> you know, when we're bummed out, we're disappointed, we're overwhelmed, or whatever, when my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you. Mm -hmm. Not know, know. Mm -hmm. Everything that's been written on my soul mm -hmm. about you. You know how God does things and, and you know that you know? Yeah. Those are the things you rehearse when your soul's right. in the dumps. Right. So as I rehearse who he is, the song, David goes on to say, I rehearse everything I know about you, and soon I'll be praising again. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I get in the dumps, and I'm all messed up with what's happening, and then I start rehearsing, oh, yeah, that's right. I, I kind of, oh, yeah, and you did, and oh, yeah, and, and, you, and that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, you're going to take care of me. You have many times before. And I say this to people all the time. you got to document what he has done on your behalf. Right. Yeah. When has he shown up? When has he revealed himself? When has he been there for you? Write it down. And then when you're at, at home and you're trying to go to sleep and your mind is on fire and you're thinking about everything that you can't control and how this is going to be failing, what about this and how come that and when is that person? All that stuff that keeps you awake at night, whip out that rehearsal book and just start rehearsing. You're like, okay, that's right, God. You're going to take care of me. You know about all this stuff. You're not going to leave me. You're not going to turn on me. You're not going to abandon me. You're going to take care of me. And then that produces thankfulness. Well, it's a big topic, as you can tell. And uh, today, the only thing I would encourage you to do is be thankful. Yeah. I mean, stop for a few moments and ask yourself, what is there in your life that yeah. you can be thankful for? I mean, you right. may have a lot of problems. We yeah. all do. We have a lot of challenges. If you're a Christian, rehearse the fact that you've been saved. 
rehearse the gospel. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. And I think if we start reflecting a grateful and, and thankful heart, will become the witnesses that God wants us to be. All of a sudden, it'll draw people to yeah. you. Well, what are you so happy about? Yeah. Well, I got a relationship that, Let me tell that's you. eternal. Yeah. You know. Well, Can't you're a delight. Lose. Thanks, Thank man. You. you bet. What are we doing next? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Love to wait and see. <laughs> okay. Patrick Doyle, Veritas Counseling. Your number real quick. 622-6018. 622-6018. That's area code 541. That's All right. We'll see you next time on Focus Today. Hi, I'm Jim and I work at the Dub TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award-winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedub.us.